Hello and welcome back again to my channel and today I'm gonna do something I promised a little bit ago and it has to do with an installation of direct output on the Sony APR 5000 series machine. If you have been watching my videos, you might remember that at some point I showed you the installation of direct outputs, direct tape outputs for this machine. And it looks very neat. It fits very nicely in this area. I had to go here because this whole area is densely covered with connectors. So there is simply no convenient room to install the additional jacks. But this area is largely unoccupied, so I just installed two mini XLR, actually it's male output connectors. And from that point it's been very, very easy. And I'll show you the details. But basically, yes, it's uh, one of the most difficult jobs here is in routing the cable. And if you're familiar with the Sony machine, you know, this is the side cover. There are handles and some screws. So the wires from the connectors go inside, follow the bottom of this cover. And then they pop out in this area. You can see how they appear from the gap, through the gap between the cover and the chassis of the machine. The gap is very wide, so there is absolutely no danger to the cables. They don't get jammed, they don't get flexed too much. They run here and they connect via those con connectors here to the pigtails coming out of the circuit boards. Why pigtails with connectors? Basically, because you would like to be able to remove the channel boards for whatever reasons without disturbing the cable harness. And this connector allows you to do just that. It's very easy. You disconnect the two sections, two parts, and you can slide out the channel board. Everything here is fairly tight, but as you can see there is enough room for the connectors to fit in nicely and not being disturbed by the cover. Well, you might say maybe not the most beautiful installation, but it's very functional and it works like a charm. So let us see how it is done on the circuit board. Here you have a perfect nice in excellent condition Sony audio channel board. This is a board I obtained on eBay and the price was actually very moderate. I think I paid $118 each. I bought two boards in this wonderful condition. The boards are basically untouched. There are no traces of repair of, or any rework. Are they working? I don't know. I haven't tried them. I might at some point, but at this point I have working boards inside of my unit, so there is no need, per se, to install these additional boards. However, since I foresee such a possibility, I would like to modify these boards the same way, so they could be installed very quickly, should there be any need for that.
We already looked before at this part of schematic for the audio channel that basically explains you how easy it is to connect the heads to direct output. Here on the left we have reproduce head connections positive and negative. And you can see that positive goes to pin 9 on the relay K1 and negative goes to pin 2 on that relay. And connecting the external output here is much more convenient than going to the output of the cable of this uh, relay. Why is that? Simply because there is also a synchronization channel connection. So when you put the switch into playback mode, you are connecting to the playback head. But when you switch into sync, your playback heads are now disconnected from your audio circuitry. Which means whatever connection you make here will be direct connection to the jack on the back panel. In other words, you are totally isolated from the rest of the circuitry. There is no interference of any kind. This is the pure connection. So you need to find those pins 9 and 2. And it is very easy. Fortunately, all the pins are numbered on the board. So that's pin 9 here and pin 2 right there. So essentially, you need to just solder your jumper cable to those two points. What about that cable? What about the wire you use? I know people go to religious wars over the cables, and I'm not one of those people. I believe in good cables, and I would like to stop there. So the cable I'm using is actually a very moderately priced Magami 3159 cable. And I like it for two reasons. Number one, it is a small diameter cable. It's about one-eighth of an inch in diameter, just, just a hair over it. Since I mentioned the space in the card cage is very tight, so you do simply don't have room for any larger diameter cables. So my recommendation is to stay with this model. Or you might consider also the model 3080, which is also a very nice cable. But I haven't tried it yet. Also small diameter. And one advantage of that other cable is that this cable, is, while very, very nice, the insulation here has very low melting point. So when you do soldering, you have to do it very quickly and with low temperature soldering iron, so the insulation would not melt and simply pull back like this. If you keep your iron longer, you will see the insulation going back and burying the wire. Just do it very quickly. One second should be enough for you to solder pre-tinned wires to circuit board points. Once again, I like this cable. If you like some other ones, all the power to you, but just keep it small diameter. When I dress this end of the cable, you notice this is a shielded cable. You can see the shield coming out of the end. But I cut the shield very tightly, very clean, and I milled the insulation slightly over it so there would not be any shield connection, and there would be no chance of shorting anything to the shield. So that's the way to dress this end of the wire. And so here we have finished board assembly with a pigtail cable attached to it. For the cable itself, 
I'm using those nice MT series connectors. They are easy to engage, disengage, very good quality, gold-plated pins, very inexpensive. Yes, they are basically designed for circuit board mounting, but you can solder wires to it. Just be careful again. And here we have this business end of the assembly. Red wire goes to pin 9 and green wire goes to pin 2. The choice of colors is yours, of course. I like it this way. So all told, when you put this assembly in the machine, you will see about three inches of pigtail coming out. You can probably make it even shorter. I like to have some a little bit of extra slack, but you don't need to. And so this is the conclusion of the installation, direct output installation story. You route the wires the way you feel is comfortable. This is my way of routing it, but you can do it slightly differently. Once again, you go into this gap here. Your wires dive into this wide gap. They follow again against the bottom of the cable, this uh, side cover. Sorry about that. And they connect to those two mini XLR connectors. I think the overall installation is really nice and clean. You can attach your labels, you don't have to really kind of like standard notation is left on the top, right on the bottom, but you can do it any way you want. And that's pretty much it. From there, you simply connect to the head preamp. Here you can see it sitting very conveniently on the bottom shelf. So the cable is only three feet long. It's a low capacitance cable, so no worries at all. So just one last minor detail. When using direct output of this configuration, make sure to press sync button before going direct output because that will disengage the active internal circuit from your output. The machine will run otherwise. If you keep it in repro mode, nothing dramatic is going to happen, but you will get a little bit more noise. That's all. So just make yourself a reminder to always engage that particular switch. So this is it for tonight's brief story. I hope you stay well, boys and girls, and have pleasant dreams. You might dream about one day finding and owning this beautiful machine, in which case you might want to come back to this video and maybe engage in this type of installation as well. Until then, Thank you for stopping by and goodbye.